So we'll continue our tenth time together about the soul winning lessons or the public ministry. Where we left off on number 27, we're actually now in the meat of witnessing to somebody. We've asked that question about if they were to be a surety of their death that they would go to heaven. And then we've had two answers. One, yes, by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, which is no further to go with the person, fellowship and uh, enjoy the time together. And then there's someone who gives the answer, no, I don't know. Or they give an answer that's not Jesus Christ. And the wrong answer to I'm going to heaven when I die can be a million answers. And it's not the answer the way, the truth, and the life. And that's where we're picking off. And we're not going to do that much review because you can get the video or the audios. And we're going to move right on now to John 3.16. And we see you'll see this sign print in John 3.16. Some ball games, that's good. But this is a, a scripture that ought to be read out. And John 3.16 says, we'll read it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, this is a great verse to start with, as we've done with other verses, as we move on. So, for God, that's the reason. The supply is God. The wages of sin is death, is man's condition. But the gift of God, the gift of God, for God so loved the world, for the gift of God's eternal life, Romans 6.23. And that eternal life is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we continue with that gift. For God so loved the world that he gave. Now you got to notice too with this verse here. It says, for God so loved. And we're not going to dwell on this a long time. But that love is past tense. And yet First John says, God is love. And there are people out there who will say, well, God hates the sin and he loves the sinner. And that's a lie. Can you honestly believe that God would love somebody who has rejected what Jesus Christ has done for them? They have rejected the gift and the love that God has shown upon Calvary. And thumb their nose at Jesus Christ for something other than Jesus Christ. And you would have the nerve to say that God loves you? That love is upon Calvary's hill. That love is the beginning of the gospel that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That God gave himself, that God gave his son. That we may have eternal life. So the love we must pass on to the person we're witnessing to is at Calvary. And yet God is love. Present. But in order to be loved by God today, now, you must put your faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ. You need to put your faith and trust and believe the gift of God and the love of God to continue that love. If not, you walk away away from Jesus Christ without faith and belief in the gospel there is no love for God so loved the world the people that are not Christians now we would say the term worldly Christian but still that's an oxymoron you're going to be a Christian you ought to be living like Christ that's what Christian means Christ I am like Christ Americans means I am of America. America. Uh, Colossians, I am of Colossae. We are to take on as Christians the nature of Jesus Christ, not the world. The world is lost. And when one has not received Christ as their Savior, they are of the world. It says that he gave that he gave the gift giving gift giving sacrifice God calling out to take what from what he has 
to offer to us. That he gave matches Romans 6.23 to give. His only begotten son. That's Jesus Christ. His only begotten son cannot be read. Mary. It cannot be Michael. It cannot be Gabriel. It cannot be anybody but Jesus Christ. And only Jesus Christ. And there's no other. There's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. And that name is Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ is the Son of God. It says that whosoever. There's no name there. Because before salvation, you don't have a name. Receiving Christ as your Savior, you get your name put in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's not there. You are unknown. And whosoever will rule every human being, regardless of race, color, or creed, or sex, or age, if you're living and breathing and have been born of a woman, you are a whosoever. And when you knock on someone's door and they answer, hello, I am here to tell you about Jesus Christ. That person behind the door is whosoever. You are dealing with somebody somewhere with a gospel track, with a Bible. You are dealing with them about Jesus Christ. That person you're dealing with is a whosoever. And they're of the world. And if you're preaching, you got many people you deal with. There are a whole bunch of whosoever. Now, believe it. Believe. Believe. And Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that belief must come from the heart. You got to have belief. In the only begotten Son of God as a person that is of the world that is not saved. That God has given a gift. Because that love was passed on at Calvary. And it's been supplied by God through Jesus Christ. you got to believe that. Oh, well, you know... I, I like this Jesus thing. I, I, I like to receive Jesus Christ thing. But, you know, also, you know, Mary, you know, she's just as good. Or my Catholic church is just as good. My religion is just as good. Uh, can I have a little Jesus and a little religion? Absolutely not. I believe Jesus was a good guy. You know, he was who he was. And he was a good instructor and... You got to believe what so far. You got to believe that God loves you enough that He has given a gift, Jesus Christ, John three sixteen, Romans six twenty three, and that gift is to be believe on. You know, in Him, whosoever believeth in Him, that's God and the Son. God and Jesus Christ. Believe Him. I don't know what modern Bibles say. I don't go to the modern Bibles. But that is a Him. H-I-M. Male. There's no room for female. And if your belief is in a female, you're not saved. If your belief is in a Him, and it's not the Son of God. It's another name. It's another person. It's another God. It's something else. You're not saved. Because when we read again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in him run back to the Son. And Romans 6.23. For the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Should not. Again, we're breaking down 316 of John. There are exceptions for eternal hell. There is a cause that you may not go to hell. Should not. 
And that should not still offers you a free will cause that if you do what God tells you to do to believe, you can gain it. But if you do not want to do what God has told you, you do not want to believe, well, then you're not going to get it. Should not. Not perish. What do you do with perishable items? You throw them out. They're no good. You trash can them. And they go into an incinerator or a dump. You know what God does with you? when he perishes you? Because you're no good. You're no use for him no more. He'll cast you off in the lake of fire that burns forever. Incinerator. It's an eternal incinerator. And you don't have to perish if you were to put your faith and belief on Jesus Christ, the love of God, the gospel, the gift of God, but have everlasting life. Forever and ever, all eternity. Now, a contrast. The same ch chapter, John 3, 3, verse 36. John the Baptist. It says, and we'll read the verse first. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. So, let's look at the righteous saved man. He. That's the whosoever. But that whosoever has now become a he and is known by God. He has had his name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. He has had the Holy Spirit indwelling in him. He is now a child of God. He's a he. He that believeth. Well, there's the belief that is found in John 3.16. He has believed, according to John 3.16. He has believed in his heart, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10. He's believed. The Son. Jesus Christ. He has believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, the gift of God, according to the eternal life offering by God, because God has loved us. He has given us his only begotten Son to suffer and die, according to the Scriptures, and that was believed upon. It's not a pastor. It's not an angel. It's not a prophet, nor is it a priest. It's only Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And has everlasting life, John 3, 16. Now, this person that has believed on Jesus should not perish but have everlasting life. He has it. He's not going to perish because of his belief on the finished work of Jesus Christ. So the first part of, of John 3, 33, yeah, John 3, 36 is a man that has believed on John 3, 16. A man that has believed on Romans 6.23. A man that has done what Romans 10, 9, and 10 has told him to do. Now the unrighteous lost man. John 3.36. And he that believeth not. Won't believe. Won't put his, won't put his, his uh, faith. Will not accept. Will not put his all into what God has done. A false belief, but not of the heart, Romans 10. He may be believed enough that somebody will get him to say, just say this prayer. There's no heart belief. He may, Paul warns us, he may believe in another Jesus, another gospel. But that's not the belief of Romans 6.23. That's not the belief of John 3.16. That's not the belief of Romans 10, 9, and 10. There is no salvation. The Son. Believeth not the Son. Again, Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ. Shall not see light. Well, what is it, Romans 6.23? What is it, John 3.16? Eternal life. Everlasting life. Now it's remarkable because John will say, But the wrath of God. Hell in a lake of fire is so 
wicked, so vile, so unmatching for man to go there, but Satan and his angels, that the Holy Spirit has written to us by John the Baptist say, listen, if you're to believe on Jesus Christ, you get eternal life. But if you were to go to hell and burn in hell, that is not life, even though a man in hell lives forever. Once we die, there is an everlasting life. There is an afterlife. It is heaven and hell. And say, describe heaven, everlasting life, according to the Bible. Describe hell for us. It's not life, and it's the wrath of God. You will not see life, and you will get the wrath of God here in hell, even though for all eternity you will live in hell, but it's no living. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God's not willing that any should perish. God does not want you to go to hell. And he tells John the Baptist, records to us, it is not the place. It is the wrath of God. And it almost looks like a contradiction, even though you have eternal life in hell, shall not see life. And Jesus Christ said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the light. And it's also remarkable for the fact is you're going to see Jesus Christ if you're if you're in hell before you go to the lake of fire because Jesus Christ is going to judge you at the great white throne judgment. But the words of Jesus Christ, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. You are cast off into hell because you will not believe on Jesus Christ. You are cast off in the lake of fire by Jesus saying, I don't know who you are. You're a whosoever. Keep your place in John chapter 3 and let's go to Revelation 20. A lost man has no name. I'm pulling my Bible in the pages. Got sprinkled. Revelation 20. You can play as in John. The Bible says in 2015, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You go into hell with no name. You go into hell with no Jesus. You go into hell the wrath of God. But you will live forever. And the strongest thing that God can lay out for us for heaven is everlasting life. The strongest thing that God can put off to hell would be it's no life, no Jesus, and it's the wrath of God. Hell. It's the contrast of the everlasting life that will happen to all men. Your soul will live for eternity. abideth on him. The man that will not believe does not trust Jesus Christ and disregards the gift of God. He has done anything to believe but that of what Jesus Christ has done. He has done every way but the way. He has done everything but the truth. And he does not end up with the life. He ends up with the wrath of God. And that's where he gets. Romans 10, 9. Romans 10, 9. See, you can't just walk up to somebody... You don't know where you're going when you die. Well, listen, you know what? Jesus Christ died for your sins. You believe that? Okay. And he can he can take you out of hell. He can save you. Can you, you believe that? Yeah. All right. All right, now just say this prayer. You got to open the scriptures. You got to do some explaining. 
It does not take five minutes for someone to get saved. It, 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 scripture with scripture. And it'll be quicker if somebody's already had been seed planted. Someone's already planted the seed in their heart and you're just watering. But we must be careful. Now salvation is simple. What is salvation that we've read already? Believing. Without works. And we live in a day and age today that we've got to explain it. There are people today, they don't even know who Jesus is. So Romans 10, 9. That if conditional, free will, you don't have to, you can If you're dealing with a Calvinist, if is a word in the Bible that does them wrong. And I should use this with a guy a couple weeks ago. If. Maybe uh, some things you just forget when, you know, when Satan comes up and attacks you. If that person you're dealing with, if he may believe, he may not believe. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. All right, so, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, your mouth, not your mother's mouth, your sweetheart's mouth, your pastor's mouth, it has to be your mouth. Ask to confess. Open up your mouth and proclaim Jesus. Confess. Proclaim with your lips. Now, I've had the opportunity for people to be saved with me there guiding them through, and I will tell them, this is what happened when I got saved. You know, I knelt down, I asked the Lord to save me, and the man that led me with the Bible said, listen, because I came out of Roman Catholic Church. He says, you don't need to confess your sins before us, the people that were in the room. He says, listen, you just open me with your mouth, ask Jesus Christ to save you. And then just to you and God, confess your sins that you can recall right then and there. And we don't need to hear you. And that moment, I don't remember exactly what happened, but I remember I asked Jesus Christ to save my soul and then secretly quietly before God I started mentioning sins that I have done and I couldn't name them all it's impossible and we've got the least when we when we're going to call upon God for salvation I will say listen I want you to reach out and ask God to save your soul by Jesus and then I want you to spend a few moments minutes whatever it be we'll just be here in quietness while you're doing it. I will be praying also I want you to start confessing your sins get that person at the means of beginning of his salvation get him to confess and hopefully when he goes on first John 1 9 if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins you've got to tell God you are a sinner if you're dealing with somebody and they will not acknowledge their sins, they will not be saved. Keep your place in Romans 10. And let's go look at 1 John verse 1, um, in chapter 1, verse 9. 1 John 1, 9. If conditional again, you don't have to. You can be saved and not confess your sins. <clears throat> you can get off the floor now. You're going to lose rewards. You're going to lose uh, crowns. You're going to lose a right to inheritance. You will be in ashes at the judgment seat of Christ if you will not confess your sin. But if you confess your sins to God and no one else, He is faithful, God is able and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness Again, I wish I had verse 10. I should open up my Bible with that guy. Confession of our sins after we are saved is conditional. I do it. Times when I'm alone or times that my mind brings up or times when I actually do sin, I confess them before God. 
But you must confess your sins to be saved. And again, you do not have to name them all. And person that you're dealing with, don't make them tell you what they are. Don't get them into a Catholic system before another man, before another priest. Let them get them before God. And then when they get saved, read to them, show them First John uh, 1, 9. Say, listen, you're still going to sin. You are still a sinner. You are a saved sinner. And when you now do sin, continue to confess them. But it's a proclamation of your mouth. Confession. It's to speak. It's to talk. It's to communicate about Jesus. And there'll be times when I am preaching on the street. And I will tell them, I have believed with my heart. I am saved. And the Bible records, I am to confess my mouth. The Lord Jesus back to Romans 10 and James tells us by it works after salvation not before if somebody will not confess Jesus Christ then you can throw a little doubt their salvation because look what it said if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart Believing in the heart and saying, I am saved by Jesus Christ and I am not ashamed. Look at verse number 11. For the scripture says, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now keep your place in Romans 10 still. Go to Mark 16. And you can go to Matthew. I go to Mark. I really don't deal Matthew with Christians. I'm not going to leave Mark uh, Matthew out. I'm doing an outline on Matthew. Matthew is a great book, but we're dealing with Christians. People will go to Matthew for the rapture, and it ain't there. But Mark 16, verse 15. And he, Jesus, said unto them, Go in all the world and preach the gospel. How do you preach the gospel? One of the ways you can do it is with your mouth. Another way, perfect way, is gospel tracts. But in order to preach the gospel, let's go to Romans 10. Go to all the world and preach the gospel. Verse 13, Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Does that sound familiar? There's John 3:16. Verse 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed before salvation? There is no belief. There is no belief at all, and they need to call upon the Lord. It's not, oh, I believe I need to be resaved. There's nothing about being resaved. You go out to a lost man, and they have the opportunity. But let's read on. How shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? Mark 16, go in all the world and preach the gospel. As it's written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. So once we are now saved, we have believed in the gospel. We have put our faith and trust and our sins on the finished work of Jesus Christ. We are not to be ashamed to go out and tell others. Now, you don't have to go on the street with a bullhorn. Or you don't have to go on the street and yell it out. As much as God's given me a big mouth that I can do that. But you can also take a Bible. And open the pages or a gospel track and open the pages and deal with Satan. See right here? That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, you see what you have done? Did you just see what you've done by reading the scriptures to somebody who's lost? You have confessed with your mouth Jesus. Did you know you did that? Did you realize you did that? I want to look over here real quick and see this one. I don't know. Note here. 
Just another note in my Bible. Ephesians 6.15 says, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's what we read over here in Romans, having your feet. Your feet are to be walking, and your mouth is all to be talking. And if you're generally saved by the saving grace of Jesus Christ, the Bible proclaims you ought to be mentioning, you ought to be talking, you are not to shut up about Jesus Christ. So back to verse 9, chapter 10, Romans. As thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe, there's that word again, John 3.16, John 3.36. In thy heart, not head, not in a prayer, but with your true heart, your inner who you are, that is the way. That is the truth. That is the only life I can have outside of nothing else, anything else. If I do not believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, I will go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I want to be right with God. I want to please God with the heart. That God has raised him from the dead. Okay, now we get the resurrection. You've got to believe in the death of Jesus Christ according to scriptures. You've got to believe he was buried. You've got to be the three days and three nights later. He arose from that grave. Alive. You've got to believe he's seated at the right hand of the Father today. Alive. The gospel has to include the resurrected Christ. Because there are people in religions out there will say he didn't really die. And the fact is, when they laid that body in that cold slab in the cave, it made him conscious. That's not death and burial. It may be a burial, but it's not death. You must believe that Jesus Christ died, dead, no breath, no heart movement, proclaimed, done. you got to believe they buried him. They put him in that tomb. They sealed that tomb. You got to believe that three days and three nights later, God raised him from that dead, raised him from that grave because to finish the work, to say, I approve of Calvary. Son, come up and come home. You must believe that. The resurrection is the third part of the gospel. In order to be saved. So, again, when we look at Romans 10 9, the Lord Jesus, you see, again, it means salvation. And salvation, the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him, and reviewing back through this verse again, keeping your place in Romans 10, let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 11. And I know I've mentioned this a few times, but here's the scripture. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 4. Here's a great warning. Here's a great warning. Here is a great warning. 2 Corinthians 11, 4. You must be aware. You must identify when you're dealing with a lost man, especially a man that is involved in any, any religion or education. 2 Corinthians 11.4, when you're dealing with somebody. For he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached. What Paul is, if the Jesus is not the Jesus that Paul preached, and Peter, and James, and John. There is another Jesus. Ain't done. Or receive another spirit. Not done. 
which we have not received, or another gospel, which we have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So, Paul speaks another Jesus. A Jesus does not welcome sin. And there are churches again out there that will welcome, and they will gratify, they will, they will party eyes, they will preach not about sin. They will welcome your sin. They will put all our welcome here. Oh, I committed this sin. Oh, it's okay. There's be a Jesus that came to North America and preached to the, to the Native Americans. That's not the Jesus in the Bible. And then there's a charismatic Jesus with another spirit of all kinds of tomfoolery. That's not Bible. And then there's a Hollywood Jesus. There's a Jesus you can see in motion pictures. There's a Jesus you can get on a CD. There's a Jesus you can watch a movie. That's not the biblical Jesus. So you must, in your soul winning, as a witness, proclaim the true biblical Jesus. You must have the scriptural gospel. You must have the correct spirit of God. Back to Romans 10, 9. And it says, and shall believe. You see again, John 3, 16, John 3, 36. It is the means of the true salvation. Salvation of God by the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, was buried and arose again according to the scriptures. If you're dealing with somebody who is saved, say, yes, that's how I'm saved. Somebody comes up to you, well, I don't really know. I'm not sure. I said a prayer. I go to, I do this, but. And yet John writes, here, these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. It's a belief. Now, here's some things about Jesus of the Bible that marks out not another Jesus. Number one, Jesus is God. You have to have God as Jesus and Jesus is God to be saved. Number two, Jesus is Jewish. He's of the line of Shem, not Ham or not Japheth. Jesus is the only means, John 14, 6 and 7. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And if you know me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Jesus Christ rightly, outright says he's God in the scripture. Jesus is virgin born. It wasn't a little private ecstasy of Mary and Joseph somewhere or Mary and anybody else. Jesus prophesied of his virgin birth by Isaiah according to the scriptures. Jesus the man of scriptures and prophet according to the scriptures. Only Jesus saves. Remove the religion. Remove the education. Remove yourself. And as far as salvation is wrought, it is only wrought by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Hebrews 11.6 But without faith, it's impossible to please him, God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. An atheist cannot get saved. Because the Bible says in Hebrews, you got to believe in God. An evolution must abandon the Big Bang for God the Creator to be saved. A Catholic has to leave Mary and the home church, the mother church, behind for God and Jesus Christ. I don't believe that is not a way of salvation. 
I don't know what you're saying is not a way of salvation. There is only one way, and that is Jesus Christ. There is only one way approved by God, that is Jesus Christ. There is only one means of salvation, that's through Jesus Christ. And that is what, who, and that is why and where, where to take them. In thy heart. It said in Romans 10, 9. In the heart, it's not a head. Salvation is a heart issue. It's not what you think. It's not what I think. It's not what whoever thinks. God never asks us about our thinking. He says to believe. And if you're dealing with someone and they are doing a lot of thinking, you got to get them on the straight path. you got to get them on the way and off the side road. you got to get them onto the way. I'm trying to think of another word. I can't think of it right now. Um, oh, well. It's conscience over feeling. Oh, I feel it. No. Salvation is not feeling. A lot of people are going to hear, depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you because they had feelings. You got to believe that God has raised him from the dead. Resurrection is a must believe. Again, we're going to go back to what the gospel is next time, Lord willing. But we're dealing with that man one-on-one. -on -one. And hopefully with the scriptures that I'm bringing forth to you will help you to reach out to people and to deal with them and to help them the way of Jesus. And some of these scriptures you may not need. Some of them you will need. You may need others. This is just a basic foundation of the public ministry and lost people. It's a wonderful, great thing to be used by God when you've got somebody and you're dealing with their future that they have an if. Now, we can't force them to salvation. We can't make them to do it. But if all oh, they were to believe on Jesus Christ and be saved, what a glory that will be in heaven. There are people who are in heaven, and there are people who are going to heaven today because I have brought the gospel to them. I have planted the seed, and God has given the increase by someone else watering. It's eternal fruit. It's pleasing to God. It's commanded by God. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. We got to make sure we get the facts down. We got to make sure we do what we're supposed to do, and that what they believe is the actual what the Bible says. We got to be honest and pure before God. <laughs>